What's up? Hope everyone's having a good day and is ready for another video in this series we like to call Underrated Throwers. Today we got Kevin Toth, a American shot putter with a PR 2267, um, which I think is still top 10 all time, although it's hard to tell now that I guess everyone throws that distance nowadays. But I think he's very underrated because he's through such a big dif distance and I'm guessing a lot of you watching this video don't know who he is. And I think that's a real shame because I think someone, even though, you know, he, he had two positive drug tests and, you know, retired from shot putting and, you know, tested positive and was a big doper, um, you know, but, you know, glancing over that small little thing, um, <laughs> you know, it's not that small, but, you know, everyone did that back in this day, you know, in the 90s. Um, and yes, I know this is John Godina. That's because it, it was showing a picture, uh, like a, a video of John Godina before this. This is not John Godina. But I made a video of John Godina, you know, if you want to check that out. But yeah, just so you know, this is not John Godina, the silver medalist at the 1996 Olympics. This is Kevin Toth. All right. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um... And, you know, judging by how he throws, you know, you can probably tell it's not John Godina. But I just wanted to make this video because, you know, I think he's just underrated. You know, I think someone that's thrown 2267 deserves some credit. You know, even if you take a lot of drugs, you know, you still you still got to have some resemblance of technique. I always say, like, you know, I use me as an example because, you know, everything's about me. <laughs> um... You know, if I took a lot of drugs, I would, my technique is not good enough to throw this far. You know, to throw over 22 meters, even with a l boatload of drugs. All right, so you still have to have good technique. All right, so it's still worth looking, but it's just with this caveat. Because with drugs, you, you can get away with a certain amount of stuff. As I'm going to explain a lot in this video. Because why? while I got to respect the distance and stuff, and one of the best American shot putters, especially at the time, um, you know... Uh, through Randy Barnes' latter years of his career and John Godina just coming into his own. Um, him, so Kevin Toth, John Godina, and Adam Nelson were basically the top throwers from like 2000 to like 2004 in America, I would say. Uh, there's arguments to be had, but um, yeah, so... You know, he, he had a short little prime, you know, because, you know, he got popped for drugs. Um, but, well, I can respect a lot of that. I also have to say, I don't like a lot of what he does in the ring. <laughs> um, I think it's, to put it nicely, a product of the time. I think a lot of the stuff that he does um, is what you would see from a middle schooler. I'm mean, sorry, a high schooler nowadays, not a, not a middle schooler. Like, a really good high schooler, which, you know, is cool, but I don't know. I, there are some good things I like, but, so let's just play this. It's here, boom. Play it. So already, the rhythm is, eh. It's all right. I think he has a late left. I think he kind of tries to do something like what Adam Nelson did, except it just doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like with his left foot, like coming down a little later you know, while trying to stay wrapped, but it just isn't the same thing. Kind of hops up in the middle. I know this isn't the best angle. I've been spending the past 10 minutes trying to find a video of Kevin Toth that is not in, not all blurry. Or shows him from the waist up. Or cuts away halfway through the throw to zoom out to show the distance. So, I'm sorry for this weird angle. Or, I guess, side angle. I normally don't like analyzing at side angles. Um, but, this is the best I could find in quality and angle. That actually shows the entire throw. So, we're going to have to deal with this for now. But, yeah. So... Let's analyze this. So he's here. Winds. I personally don't really like people winding like this because 
you know, I tend to coach a leveler chest and a lot more legs. Here, I don't feel he's that separated, really. I guess he's kind of, but I just don't like this angle. I think it, if you have that low of a chest, it tends to lead to hopping in the middle, which he does, and I believe that he reaches for the front, which is why he has such a small, even though you can't see because people don't know how to film throws. Um, another thing that is a product of this time is people not knowing how to film freaking throws and zooming out and not being able to see the entire throw, but whatever. So he, he has a very small base. You could just tell he lands super in the bucket. And what I mean by in the bucket is as his left foot is way over here instead of a heel toe relationship or heel heel relationship depending if you coach an open foot or not, an open left foot in the front, which I personally do. Um, but, yeah. So, and, you know, he kind of hops up quite a bit. I tend to coach, for the most part, you know, everyone's different. So, I guess this works for him, obviously. But me personally, I just think for people learning the shot put and people who aren't that advanced, this out the back is not very good. You know, obviously, you know, this kind of looks like Randy Barnes throwing, except Randy Barnes was a little better and a little smoother through the ring. Um, But, like, this position right here. Although Randy Barnes wasn't quite this hunched over, and his leg would be wider, his sweep leg. But, you know, it's the same kind of thing, you know. People, people want to copy the world record holder, which, you know, makes perfect sense because, you know, you want to do what the best do. So, we'll try and copy what the best do. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like a knock on them or anything. You know, people try and copy Krauser. People try and copy Kovacs. People try and copy, you know, whoever. So, yeah. That's not like a knock or anything. It's just, once again, a product at the time. Nowadays, you don't see many people throw like Randy Barnes. And there's good reasons why. You know, because like Kevin Toth, he was also really drugged up <laughs> and got a famously a lifetime ban so for drugs so yeah but that's another video for another day even though i don't know why i'd make a video on that because you could just wikipedia that but yeah so let's see so he's out the back here i actually really like the separation he gets here you know, most people this time, and I tend to feel pick up the right foot way too early out the back. Um, but he actually doesn't pick it up that early, which I actually really like. Um, this is one of the few things I like about his technique. But he's here, gets a really nice angle. I like I always, I really like what his legs do. Kinda. He he kind of throws kind of like Adam Nelson. And Randy Barnes, if they had a baby, he kind of throws like them. Or like, this position reminds me a whole lot of Adam Nelson. While this position reminds me a lot of Randy Barnes. So out the back, he kind of looks like Randy Barnes. But in like the, the finish, he kind of looks like Adam Nelson. You know, and I mean, those are two great throwers to copy. I mean, you know, it's not like Kevin Toth could copy Krauser or Kovacs and stuff. You know, obviously. Um, but yeah, so, you know, he's one of the few people I've seen kind of do kind of what Adam Nelson does and can throw far with it. So I guess I can give him some credit for that. He's obviously a supreme athlete, which you got to be a throw over 22 meters because I don't believe everybody can throw over 22 meters. I believe that given the r amount of training, good training, how long you stick with the training, Almost anybody could throw over 20 meters. It'd be hard. But once you start getting the 22 meters, that's not every... I don't believe everyone could throw at 22 meters. I believe you have to have the right genetics. You have to be kind of lucky in what coaches you get, what training you get, you know, what system you get put in, all that. You know, you have to... The stars have to line up. All right? So... And just like I believe, not everyone can throw 80 meters in hammer. Not everyone can throw 70 in disc. You know, 
like obviously like don't just give up and just don't try but you know there's a reason why so few people throughout history i mean if you look at all the throwers i've ever thrown when you really think about how many have actually thrown those like like goat distances you'll see how like how few actually have done that and you know so yeah that's you know now nowadays we look at a 22 meter throw and we're like oh that's cool I think we just forget like 22 meters from like 2015 and down would basically win almost any competition in history. Like that's insane. <laughs> so yeah, like any major, like that would win the 2000, 2000 Olympics, 2004 Olympics, 2008 Olympics and 2012 Olympics. That would win almost all the world championships in between. And I know that because some of them you did have to throw 22 meters to win. So, like, it's, like, actually insane, like, how far. Like, 22 meters is 72 feet around. So, I think it's a little more than 70. It's, like, 72, like, 3 or something. I don't know. But that's really far, you know. So, yeah. It's, like, when people throw 22 meters, I just want you to know, like, right now we're spoiled. But... I don't know how much longer this will continue. Like, this is... Um, like, nobody has been... Not a lot of people have thrown 22 meters. We haven't got, like, a lot of 22 meters since the drugged-up 80s, basically. So, that's something to keep in mind as well. So, I just want, you know, modern-day throwers and throwers, you know, growing up nowadays to appreciate, like, what age we're in right now in throwing. And, like, how much of the sport has grown and how much of um just we've learned about how to throw and on the woman's side too you know the throws have been growing you know the woman has started spinning um you know have started to actually take training seriously and i think we're going to start seeing a lot more 21 meter throwers again you know people have started getting close like chase ely maggie you and sarah minton you know, I started regularly throwing over 20 meters. So I think we're going to start seeing that again. So I'm just talking about spinners, you know, gliders have been throwing 20 plus meters forever, but yeah. So, but actually, I don't know how we just got on that whole tangent, but, um, talking about Kevin Toth, but yeah, uh, let's get back to this analysis. I don't know how I keep distracting myself. So Oh my god, we haven't made it at the back of the ring. So he's here. Gets a good push. I don't like the fact that he raises this much. Which he kind of has to do. Because his chest is so low. What I like is... What I prefer is... He was more like this. But his legs were the same. And he would... And actually this shin angle is fine. He would sprint forward and not up to get even more momentum, linear momentum, while sweeping this really wide. And he does sweep really wide. And I do like what his sweep leg does and his right hip does in the middle. This, I believe, should go more forward and not up. And I think that would lead to him getting his right foot a little more under him and not landing like this. I believe that if he landed a little... um more bent in the right knee in the middle that he could just turn and it wouldn't take so long for his left foot to rise i mean, sorry to get down in the front and then he would land a little more back and he could push on the shot a little longer now again i don't know how far this throw was this could have been a really bad throw for him i have no idea it does not look like a bad throw in any means but this release right here really reminds me of adam nelson just staying on it forever. In this position right here, like landing like this, kind of open, but the hips really ahead of the shot. Um, Almost kind of like Adam Nelson and Tom Walsh, although more like Adam Nelson. Tom Walsh is a little more upright when he finishes, when, I mean, when he's in his power position. Uh, sorry, not upright, but not, not angled like this. He's a little more like this, still at an angle, still over his right side. But, um... Yeah, and then this right here, this elastic effect that he gets, and just staying on the shot forever, 
that's beautiful. And again, that's also not very typical at the time. A lot of people were taught back then to just, you know, get the shot out of your hand as quickly as humanly possible. Nowadays, we know the longer you can stay in contact with the shot put, the more force you can apply for longer, which in theory will generate a lot more power, which is another thing that I really like about him is that he also stays grounded. A lot of people at this time were still jumping and still kind of finishing like a glide because the spin was still still gaining popularity. You know, a, a lot there were fewer spinners than gliders still at this point, although it was growing a lot with the rise of John Godina and, you know, um, before that, Randy Barnes and stuff like that. So, you know, it's still, it was, but it was still, it's not nearly as popular as now. Now, you, nowadays, I think David Stroll is like the last glider to make major competitions, really. So, and now he retired a while ago. So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But, yeah, I think he throws very of the time, but also very modern day. I will not really say anything really bad about this release because if if any of my my athletes ever had a release like this, I would be absolutely very happy with that. Now how he gets to the release is eh. I I don't feel like he has a lot of rhythm. Um and he's not very fluid and I think he could be a lot faster through the ring. I think he could get that left foot down a little sooner. But, I mean, he still stays back on it. And this is what I'm talking about with, like, the Adam Nelson kind of thing. You know, because Adam Nelson's foot was left foot was a little delayed in the front. But because he, he held his wrap for so long, it just helped him even get more stretch reflex on his right side. So when that left foot landed, it just untorqued him even faster to release. Which is why he gets this super elastic finish. And he just kind of just... He just it just pops out of his hand. It lo just looks like a freaking catapult just slinging a shot. Boom. You know, and that's a beautiful release. You know, Krauser gets that kind of release. Like this is this right arm almost looks like Krauser, except Krauser somehow keeps his thumb down. I still don't understand how he keeps his thumb down that long cuz most people kind of turn their hand a little bit out. You don't want it too much on, on the release, but and I think I've made a video on that, but, um, yeah, like it's insane. Like how good this release is. I mean, it's just textbook and the block. I know you can't really see that much of the block. He stays, he has a pretty good solid block and yeah, I just really like, I love what his right side does to the ring throughout the entire throw, you know, is his left side is I just wouldn't coach that. That doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, I believe there's really no wrong way to throw necessarily. I believe that a good technique for you is a technique that makes you throw the furthest. All right. And, you know, coaches will have different opinions and stuff. Does not make them wrong. You know, people have had co um, several good uh, co coaches have coached several good athletes and, you know, two athletes may look so, like, super different, but they're the same distance, really. You know, Kovacs, Krauser, look a lot different when they throw. Throw based around the same distance, you know. So, I mean, you can't knock it. Adam Nelson, Kevin Toth, throw pretty different. Throw around the same. Oh, no, maybe I should say Adam Nelson, like, Reese Hoff, and C Christian Cantwell. Throw very different. Still around the same PR. Still around kind of the same career. Adam Nelson had a little better career. You know, it's just different. You know. So, yeah. That's something to keep in mind as well. You know, if a coach tells you, you know, like, oh, this it's my way or the highway or like. Well, maybe that's not the right uh, term. Like, if a coach tells you, like, oh, this is the only way to. Th my way is the only way that works. That's just dumb. Honestly, that's just dumb. If you don't believe me, look, just ask like any competent coach. I've asked Art Venegas this. He's like, I wouldn't coach that, but I can't argue with the results. And just stuff like that. Like, it. that's what a lot, like a good coach would say is, you know, like for me personally, 
Weiss Heidinger, the discus thrower who, I, to this day, I still do not like the way he throws. But then again, I can't argue with a bronze medal at the Olympics, a bronze medal at the World Champs, and a 70-meter thrower. I just can't argue with the results. I don't like the re- I don't like it. I don't like the way he throws at all, and I would personally never really coach anybody like that. But then again, if I was coaching him, I personally probably wouldn't change it that much just because of the success he's had and the time that he's spent doing that technique. That doesn't mean I have to like it, but you can't argue with it is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, there are a lot of throwers I don't like the way they throw. But, I mean, they throw far, so, I mean, that's the goal at the end of the day. So, yeah, but I hope you guys learned something. Um, sorry if I get distracted a bunch. I tend to do that if you watch any of these videos. And I guess, so in the video description, I will list his personal best, height and weight, and noble accomplishments. He didn't really do that much in terms of ac- achievements that I can find. But in terms of like, he, I don't think he ever really won medals or something at Olympics or Worlds. He did make a, um Olympic and World team, I think. I think. I know he's made the 2003 World Champs final, but um yeah but i'll i'll post that in the video description but yeah hope you guys like the video and thank you guys for watching and see y'all next time see y'all later